Reducing a fraction to its simplest form means that we're going to divide the parts of the fraction, the numerator and the denominator, until they have no common factor other than one. We have two strategies for doing this in fifth grade. The first strategy is to reduce by the greatest common factor. Or we can reduce, simplify, those words mean the same thing, reduce by any common factor until the fraction cannot be reduced anymore. So our first strategy is to reduce by the greatest common factor, also known as the GCF. The GCF is the largest factor shared by the two numbers. It's a way to simplify a fraction in fewer steps. To find the greatest common factor, or the GCF, we're going to make a list of factors. And we need to remember that a factor is a number that is multiplied with another number to make a certain product. And so in this case, I'm trying to think of numbers that can be multiplied together to make 12. We're going to make an organized list so that we don't leave any out. 1 times 12, and yes, I'm skipping this face on purpose, 1 times 12 makes 12. 2, marking my way up, 1, 2, 2 times 6 also makes 12. Now I'm looking for other factors. They're going to be between 2 and 6. After 2 comes 3, and I know that 3 times 4 is 12. And then here's how I know I'm done with my list of factors. I was working my way up. I started with 1, 2, 3. And the pair, the factor that went with the 3 to make 12, was 4. And there are no other whole numbers in between 3 and 4. So I know my list of factors is complete. Now I need to list my factors for 20. Again, I'm going to start with 1 times 20. And yes, skipping space. Okay, 1 times 20, how about 2? 2 times 10. 3 times nothing is 20, so that won't work. 4 times 5 would make 20. And again, that pair that went together to make 20, 4 times 5, there's no other whole number in between. So this is a complete list of factors of 20. So now that I have both lists of factors, I'm looking for the greatest common, that means shared, factor. They share ones, they share twos, they share fours, not five, not six, not 10, 12, or 20. So the largest factor that they both have, they being the 12 and the 20, the largest factor that they both have is four. So the greatest common factor of 12 and 20 is four. Now the reason that I find that greatest common factor is to help me simplify or reduce the fraction. So these were the parts of the fraction. It would have been 12 twentieths as a fraction. If I now divide both parts by this greatest common factor, then I will have the fraction in simplest form. So 12 divided by 4 is going to be 3, and 20 divided by 4 is going to be 5. So 12 twentieths is the same as 3 fifths, and this is in simplest form. there's another strategy that you might like better for reducing a fraction to its simplest form, and it is to divide by any common factor. There's four steps that I have to go through. First, I'm going to think of a factor, a number that I can multiply by and make both of these numbers, because they have to share the factor. And when I'm looking at 12 twentieths, I know that they're both even numbers, so I can divide them both by two. Step two is to actually divide the numerator and the denominator by that number that I came up with, so two. If I do 12 divided by two, that gets me to six. And if you divide by two on the, or in the numerator, you have to divide the denominator by two as well, which would get me down to 20, or sorry, 10. But then I have to ask myself, can the new numerator, six, and the new denominator, 10, be divided by any other common factors. 
And so I have to look at 6 and I have to look at 10 and think about how I would multiply to make those. And I know that they're both still even, so I could divide by 2 again. And if the answer was yes, yes, then I need to divide again. So I'm going to divide by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now that I've divided again, I need to ask myself the question again. Can the new numerator and the new denominator be divided by any other common factors? Well, I know that the way to make 3, the only way when I'm multiplying, is 1 times 3. And if I divide by 1, it's not going to make my 3 any smaller. So I can't do that. If I divided by 3, that would get smaller. But can I divide 5 by 3 and get a whole number answer? No. So this fraction has nothing else in common other than 1. And so it is in simplest form. Now this time, this was the same fraction as from the first strategy, by the way, which I divided by 4 and I was done all the way down to simplest form. This time I had two steps. I divided by 2 here and then divided by 2 again. And that's okay because I got me the same answer. I would like for you to try both of these strategies in your math journal. On the first two problems, I'd like for you to use the greatest common factor. So actually make your list, find the greatest factor that they share, divide by that to find the simplest form of both of these fractions. And then try the other strategy where you can reduce these fractions by any common 